Hi, I'm Danny Butler. It's 2022, which means more new trial tube. And we're going to start as we mean to go on with a Vertigo factory visit and a Vertigo Nitro review. Because this is Trial Tube! tube. So the time has come and we're going to start talking about Vertigo's brand new bike, the Nitro, from Busto fame. But honestly, is it as good as my last one? Now, the thing about the Nitro is, this is a completely new bike and Vertigo have just released bike after bike after bike and people often get confused with which one is the new one. It's this one. Now, we all know that I was a fan of my R3, undoubtedly, but does that mean that I love this bike? There's a lot that's changed and I am gonna be honest, and we are going to test it properly, and I am going to be honest. Brian, I'm going to be honest with you, that smells like pure gasoline. So let's get started. We're going to be talking about the changes first and foremost. So, new frame, slightly revised head angle, same wheels as an R3. That's not really a change, is it? No. Also, that brand new exhaust, that mudguard, housing unit for the new ECU, to supposedly keep it dry. New linkage, new water pump, which... It's still electrically driven, and a few other little plastic parts to just tidy her up when you're filling it full of fuel. Now, I said I was going to be honest about this bike. I have actually owned this Vertigo Nitro now for a couple of weeks. So, could we class this as a long test review? Maybe. But... There are a few things on this bike that, although I was super excited like a kid at Christmas when I got this one, because it was just like Jaime Busto's bike. But there's some stuff that doesn't really work for the UK, such as they've now situated the ECU or changed the location of it from being under this panel here on the R3, where you could actually get at it with the two pins here and taking the, uh, opening the fuel cap, taking those two pins out and then taking a couple of pins out and sliding out the bodywork. They've now taken it from here and moved it to under here. So once you take these two out, this slides off and under there you will see the ECU and a bunch of other electrics that in all fairness they've situated in one place. One place where they can all get wet together. I'm going to insert a photo now. Now would I have known that? If I hadn't have had the bike for so long and if this was a normal test where the bike just turned up, I wouldn't have had to basically have any experience with it. And um, then I could have just said how amazing the bike was, blown smoke up its rear end, and all of you lot would have gone, I must have one. So again, there are lots of parts on this bike which have been a huge progression for the brand, but some things may not work here in the UK because we have a lot of water and a lot of mud. Here I am, sat in some water, probably about to ride in some mud. So yeah, there's that. There's also the fact that this is the first bike that I've had from Vertigo that um, has taken some mechanic in now because every time that all that water and muck gets inside here, I have to clean it out. And I didn't have to do that with my old bike. You could sort of airline the back end of the exhaust off, which was already dry because the heat from the exhaust had dried all the electrics anyway. So. Uh, Although the bike does breathe a lot better now with this new exhaust system, and it does because it sounds ferocious. Well, there's a lot of water getting near the ECU and that's not a good thing. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, she's still fit. 
So before we go any further into this bike, I do think it's important that, you know, I don't want to tell you all the pitfalls and pros to this one yet. I want you to keep watching and we're going to uh, investigate where these are built, how they're built, and uh, we're going to go to our foreign correspondent, Senor Danny, over at Vertigo. Now you're not going to believe this, but Vertigo have basically just let us do whatever we want inside the factory, which is awesome. And, well, we are going to do exactly what we want. It's sick. So as part of the journey of the bike getting built, obviously there's a new assembly line here at Vertigo. Now, this bit of video we've been allowed access for, obviously it's not a direct video for Vertigo, but at the same time, everybody behind me has got plenty of stuff to do to turn a bike from this into this. Basically, a pre-packed Vertigo that needs its pegs on because it's on a stand, back mug guard fitted, but I'm not entirely sure they'll do that. I think they just might get it boxed up, but we'll find that out because everything's done by hand. So somebody has literally got to by hand, get that bit done. Are you mine? I'm not sure if this one's mine. I shall call him Squishy and he shall be mine and he shall be my Squishy. Come here, Squishy. Come here, little Squishy. So we're in a different room now in a very small assembly line where we have Xavi and Joachim who are making these engines one per hour. Now all Vertigo engines are hand built and, and these guys have got a mammoth task of putting together all of your bikes. Well when I say bikes I mean the heart of the bike and what can I say it's a very clean room. And I did find that one item that I was looking for on all the other bikes that I found when I had my bike. That's right, there's about 10 cans of grease over there. Nice one. Just, just look at all the parts. This is ridiculous. Now, this line of bikes here has been checked off and uh, is ready to go. Now, the checkoff system here at Vertigo is pretty in depth and as we know, the bikes are hand built. There's a lot that goes into make sure all the bikes go to the right place. So let's just have a little look. Oh, where's this one going? This one is going to Danny Butler. Okay, very good. And this one is going to Danny Butler, and this one is going to, let's just see, I'm, I'm sure somebody else would have bought a bike. Uh, no, that's, that's, that's Danny Butler. No. This guy is Diego, and Diego is basically the head of packaging, I've just been told, the director at Vertigo of packaging. Now, Diego is the man that sends out all of your, basically, joy and happiness. He is basically Vertigo's version of Santa. So when your bike gets to you, it's this guy that packages it. He's a professional. We don't mess around with Diego because honestly, nobody wants to get a scratch bike. After all of this hard work, it's down to this one man who didn't even stop for an interview to make sure that it's all safe and sound. Good work, Diego. Okay. Let's party. So as always, we're gonna put some sections together and try this bad boy out. Because let's be honest, she sounds lovely, darling. 
Oh, don't be like that now. No! Honesty is the best policy. So, behind me here at Inch Perfect is a very loose, very steep stream, which basically heads up towards the Charles Park, but there's a nice slippy corner at the top, and I feel like this is a great way of checking out the extra suspension that we've now gained in the Nitro, aside from the uh, previous model. Hopefully it'll allow the bike to be nice and planted, and um, for me to hold grip, very Scotland. So first things first, the Nitro is just as planted as any Vertigo, but this is without a flywheel weight, which means you've got to be a lot more gentle. You've got to let that bike speak to you. And use that bottom end until you don't want to use the bottom end. All the way down, the Nitro having the pegs so far back, as all Vertigos do, allows it to flow easily between the rocks. I mean, there's hardly any weight on my hands right now, and it really is a nice smooth ride. You can feel where you've gained that extra suspension, no problem. So this time we're coming up in first gear, a little bit higher on the revs. But you can see the bike isn't fighting for grip. Still having a good line, the power's there when you need it. And she still really is. Now today we are on the 300 again, it is my bike, and I wanted to show people just how awesome this bike's gearbox is still. Third gear. You can hear that grunt on the bottom end. So that was a quick ride up a stream doing something Clubman style that you probably see at any trial in the UK. Now. The Nitro has been built for more artificial style riding. So we've got a second section here, nice little second gear, double step into a few more steps going upwards. And I'm gonna try and talk up through it as I do it, which isn't gonna be easy because uh, it takes a little bit to get up this one. Right, first things first, we're in second gear and I'm gonna show a little bit of the power of what the 300 Nitro is all about. And this is in the wet, remember? Did you see that amount of power there? Yeah, there was some timing and technique, but I've never rode a bike so springy. So we've got three more steps to go. They're only baby ones. So a little bit of first gear. Got to bring up the front wheel. Very, very arena trial-like. Getting that weight back. And you can already see the advantage. That suspension on the new Vertigo is, well, it's plush to say the least. Now, you're not gonna believe this, but that was the uh, first go. And I have settled into this bike, yeah, definitely. Complete full disclosure, I've had a flywheel weight on it. I've had one off it. For people that know me, they know it's the truth because it was for sale on my Facebook. And I've now got used to the overrun of this bike. There's so much power. So, I know a lot of clubmen watch my channel. If you are a clubman watching this and want to buy a 300 Vertigo, do yourself a favour and buy the 250. Still loads of power. But not as much as this! Oh, beauty! Now it's time for trial tubes. Three good and three bad things about your Vertigo Nitro. And I'm gonna get them out of the way really fast because right now I'm currently testing out a waterproof jacket of my own design. I also sell 
waterproof boot socks by Morrison's, the carrier bags. Now, today we're at Inch Perfect. We're gonna be talking a little bit about these guys because it's a one-stop shop for brand new bikes like this stunning 301RR Repsol Honda. Are you mine? Second hand bikes. I want to say second hand, they're normally in really good condition because they've been through their workshop. As well as being the UK's premier trials destination, they're also an importer. When I say an importer, they are basically the driving force behind the EM brand, which, as you can see next to me, has a few in stock, as well as test bikes and second hand bikes and this e pure comp race in front of me, which are you mine? They also have an enormous stock of boots and helmets for you to try out whilst you're here. Oh, have I mentioned that they've actually got the biggest stock in the UK of Alpine Star as well, which seem to be on a deal right now. Are you mine? They also have an extremely experienced parts department. Good afternoon, it's Perfect Parts Department. Yes, I'd like to um, order a belt drive for a 1970 gas gas, please. Nice try, Danny. They also have an enormous range of clothing in different sizes, styles, from a range of brands, but only the top ones in trials. Are you mine? It's also the kind of place that you can turn up and meet like-minded people that love trials. Like this guy. Hello, mate. It's also the kind of place where you can come and grab a nice warm drink mid-ride, but don't walk in with your boots on because they've got a really nice carpet. It's also one of the only venues that you can come to in the country where you actually have to sign on digitally. God, future spec. So Inch Perfect is also the kind of place that was started by Charles enthusiasts, like Matt, who for almost a decade now has been providing pay and play, experience, test rides, corporate, mm, training, and a venue that could probably hold a British championship here. So yeah, good work, Matt. Back to Danny. Three good things. Good thing, number one, it's still a vertigo. And when I ride this, there's a smile from ear to ear because it feels creme de la creme. They've had a really good thing about this bike. And honestly, I love everything about it. Good thing number two. The extra rear suspension that we've gained from the last bike to this one means that when I land off big drops, it doesn't feel like it's gonna break my legs. And good thing number three, the new exhaust system basically means that this bike, it revs out clear and it takes off like a rocket. One of the good things is the power does come down with a downside. I would recommend that if you are a clubman, don't buy the 300 and please buy something a little bit more tactful because it's called a nitro for Christ's sake. What do you think it's going to act like? It's going to be absolutely bonkers. And after a bit of British weather and a small riding interlude, three bad things about your Vertigo Nitro 2022. Bad thing, number one, when I got this bike, it was dry as a bone, the complete opposite to my rear end right now wearing the tights. Which I mean, there wasn't a bean of grease in the whole thing. I had to re-grease the whole bike. And if you can remember on the old video, I said how impressed I was when I had a vertigo and they actually were able to find some grease in Spain, which is incredible. I mean, when I was at the factory, I even saw the tub of grease. Maybe they just have it on show. Who knows? Bad thing number two. Moving the ECU into this box is a great idea. It's right out of the way and probably very secure. I don't know who's trying to steal it, but what I do know is it's not secure enough for water not to get in there because after riding it today, I'll open this up, read the picture that I showed earlier on, and um, well, it'll be in there and it'll need a bloody snorkel. 
That's how much water will be in there. It's a joke. Bad thing number three. Now, I don't know whether it's because of some nice guy on YouTube saying how good these bikes are, but Vertigo have had an influx of sales due to quality, due to good marketing, due to a possible YouTube channel that we shall not mention. No. But for some reason, the bikes are coming out the door and quality control is a little bit dodgy because again, when I had this bike, not only was it without grease, but I also had to straighten the forks out, tighten my shocker in, and the dog bones were actually rubbing on the shocker bolt, meaning I've had to space them out so that they don't catch. Because when I was jumping up and down, which I do a lot of, because the non-stop riders call that messing around, I'm doing a video about that, so stay tuned. When I've done some jumping around on the bike, well, there was a knocking noise. And that ain't the kind of knocking I'm into, I can tell you now. So, that's bad thing number three. But don't get me wrong. I still like it. For one reason. Listen to this! Oh dear hell! Once again, thank you for watching Trial Tube. We really appreciate the support of our subs and uh, everybody that's joined us because over the last month we've had another almost 400 subscribers to the channel so that's a huge thank you to you guys. Um, thank you for Inch Perfect supporting this episode which makes a world of difference. If you do want to advertise your shop or brand here on Trial Tube then we'd love to have you. It's not going to be cheesy advertising, it's going to be super cheesy advertising and that's the way we do it. No. Apart from that, I feel like today we've been able to try out some of the Trial Tube merch. This is one of the new coats. If you're interested in any of the merchandise, it helps the channel. Basically, it keeps me out of the poorhouse and allows me to keep buying really cool bikes. So, well, there's that. Last but not least, a little thing about this new Nitro. I do really like it. I don't want people thinking that I was vertigo bashing, but I'm not paid to make these reviews, so I'm going to be honest. And... I don't want such a good brand failing to control their quality out the door. So let's keep them on the toes, shall we? It's a very good bike. I think the 300 is super powerful. Um, not really one for the clubman. But I am going to have a 300 versus 250 video coming up shortly for the people that say I never ride the smaller CC bike. So look out for that one. But until next time, thank you again. See you soon. And... I've got some daylight, so I'm going to do some more riding because once again, the missus doesn't even know I'm up here. There's no phone signal. Is that, is that a good thing about coming to Witch Perfect? We don't know. But for now, Nitro! <laughs>